Welcome to the QuickBooks Online Payroll and Sales Tax Tutorial. I've had a lot of people ask for these classes, so I thought I would combine them. Enjoy. First thing you want to do is go over to your Employee Shortcut Bar and select Employees. Your employee screen opens up to a zero balance as you have not turned on payroll. It does, however, let you add employees. So the first thing we want to do is go to the right and select Turn on Payroll. This will open up enabling you to choose your plan or just add employees. Right now we want to go ahead and select Choose your plan. Now they've given you an option of features and you can select those. As you'll see in here, we want to um, pay our own taxes and we do have an expert that handles it. So they have what is called the enhanced payroll and the enhanced payroll, of course, you can try for the 30 days. And what this does is it lets you control when the payments are made. It does do everything through electronic funds transfer at the setup, but it will give you reminders and it is a very easy program to use. The next one is the full service payroll. And on this full service payroll, there are a lot of different options for you in this as far as they will handle paying all your taxes. All you have to do is make sure that the hours are in there and submitted. Here are the options in the enhanced and the full service. You'll notice the full service down here actually lets us file and pay taxes based on paychecks you enter. And this runs your first payroll with live experts so that you can feel comfortable knowing that you've done everything correct in that first payroll. Now let's add all our employees. So you'll put the name in, the W-4 information that they should have filled out, how often you pay the employees, and also you want to make sure you have the additional pay types in here that you might need. The pay types here are prevailing, rate corrections, you can add an hourly rate, you can have a drop down that will give you options for all types of different salaries as well. Now you can go over to the overtime, double times, vacation pay. These are all the items that you're actually choosing that they can get paid on. They may not be getting paid today, but you will have that option in the future and you won't have to go back and add it. Here is a snapshot of what we have just filled out. And in this portion of it, we want to make sure that the pay is correct and it will give you a snapshot of the person's taxes, if they're married, how many allowances. And then the profile, of course, is their address. And that's uh, if you're going to be running the W-2s yourself, you want to make sure that's correct. And then the last box here is the employment, with where they are working. And those are the three main screens you need to have filled out in order to pay this employee. Now we want to go over and select the employees that we want to pay. And in doing so, you are going to select Run Payroll at the top right. You have the option to do monthly or weekly. You may have different employees that you have set up that way, and that's how QuickBooks determines what ones you want to pay at what time. You'll hit continue at the bottom, and here is what the sheet looks like where you will enter the hours, such as in this case, these are the regular hours. You've got the prevailing hours, any overtime hours. And you can also set up the vacation and pay along with holidays and bonus. 
once you have entered all of your hours, you will select Preview Payroll. The Preview Payroll screen will show your total payroll costs, the net, what the employee's taxes are that have been taken out, and what the employer owes. To the right is your option to look at the paper checks. You can also set those up to be direct deposit. I believe it is a $2 charge uh, to have the direct deposit option. You will then select print checks. And in doing so, you can print all your checks or check stubs if you are doing electronic funds transfer. Once you have completed that, you want to make sure you go over and put in the check. Here is a copy of a payroll check before it's printed. You will go to the payroll check option and select the printer. Now you can fill out the check number and select finish payroll. It will give you an option now to pay your taxes due for this payroll. Once you select review and pay, it will take you out of the screen and you will go to the far left shortcut bar and select payroll taxes. Here in the payroll tax center, you will see a green bar and any taxes that are due. In this case, we have the California um, and the SDI due on 412. And if you are going to use an e-payment, it was going to show you your cutoff times for all of that. So that's the main part of this screen that you're looking at. And you'll select pay taxes. In here you will create a payment to the right and this payment here will then be added to your checkbook or you can do an EFT. You'll notice on the left we have the pay electronically or make the payment myself. You've got the liability period and you also have the bank account it's coming out of and an option for the earliest or latest date that you can make your deposit. If everything is set up properly, you should be able to go right on over and hit ePay. Once that is paid, it will populate in your check register and decrease the amount and show you the date that it was created. Now this main screen here uh, will also show you how to edit your e-file and e-pay setup and your tax setup. Also view tax liability reports and any payments that you have made and history. So in an e-pay and e-file setup you want to go and select the box to the left, which is the tax payment information, and also the checking account that it will be coming out of with the routing and account number. The tax setup overview will go over your tax setup for your state, setting your SUI rates and ETT rates. These usually come in the mail at the first of the year or you can call your state and get those percentages as well. The federal is set up and you can edit any of these items, but as long as everything looks good here, your tax setup is done properly. As far as deductions go, you can ask your CPA if they are um, taxable or non-taxable deductions. Here are the options that you have. And if you're unclear, QuickBooks also has the help menu. So any of your deductions, such as your health insurance and life, can be done on the pay stub. Now there's also a tax setup overview where you can go through and 
select preferences for your paycheck printing, W-2 printing, and any group reports that you want to see for your payroll. To the right is forms. Here's all of your payroll forms that you will be using. You have your quarterly, your annual, any employee setup forms, and the employer setup forms. So if you don't have a federal ID or state ID, this will also show you those forms and what to fill out in order to begin doing payroll. The quarterly forms, of course, include the 941. And in this case, since this is California, we have the DE9 and DE and the DC. For any state, these will all be set up by QuickBooks automatically. In the employee setup forms, you will have the new hire form and also your 1099 form for your independent contractors. Any of these authorizations for direct deposits um, and any withholding allowance certificates you can print here as well. It makes it really nice and convenient. In the employer setup form, this is where if you do not have your employer ID number, uh, you want to go ahead and set up the um, application so that you can get that. It takes about two to three days. Sometimes it could be 48 hours. Um, and then, of course, your state application. You will get to all the payroll reports through the shortcut menu by selecting reports. You want to go down to manage payroll reports and this will open up all the different reports that you can use for your payroll. One of my favorites is using the payroll summary. This gives you a total of wages, taxes withheld, and all the deductions along with employer portion. The other nice report I use is the workman's compensation report and total payroll costs for budgeting. Most of these reports are easy to use. You can also export them out to Excel if you need to add additional information. Now we're going to move on to sales tax. In sales tax, there are two main things that need to be set up. First thing that we want to go over is setting up your product and services that are taxable. So your products and services tab Anytime you're adding new products, you're going to add it through here. And the new product at the bottom has the is taxable. So you'll notice that when you put in the product, this product happens to be taxable at all times. So that's number one. Number two is to go to the customer. And we're going to go over to cool cars. And inside Cool Cars, I want you to notice there's a couple tabs at the bottom here. But the one main tab that we want to look at is tax information. So this customer is taxable, and this is the default tax code. You can have multiple uh, tax codes set up in here as well. So when you're in an invoice and we select, in this case, the Rock Fountain, it will populate it as a taxable item with a check mark and it will put in the default California in this case 8%. When we're ready to make a payment on our sales tax we'll go over to the shortcut menu and select sales tax. In this screen you will see your liabilities or ta sales tax owed in this box and then any payments that you've made in this box. You can run a quarterly report and see what is owed for a certain period of time. In this case, we're looking at the sale we just made to the cars from 4117 to 63017. So I can see where I'm at at any time on that sales tax liability report. You can also change and add 
sales tax rates and agencies. You will just hit the new key. You can also record sales tax payments. So once you're in there, you can select a payment date and a tax period ending, and we will have the total payment at 139.02. Also notice I'm going to print the check. Once you select that, record payment and print check. In the Sales Tax Center now, you will notice that the $139 payment has made the balance zero for the period through March. At the bottom of the recent sales tax payment, you will notice the pay date was 331. I can now go to my bank register and you will see that it is ready to print and deducted out of my account. And that is the fastest way to start your payroll and start using your sales tax. Hopefully this helped and thank you again for all your requests.